Sometimes you may ask yourself, why am I here? What is the purpose of my life? Why am I doing all the things that I do each day? Human life is very short. You are a babe, a child, a youth. Then you've grown to adulthood. And then adulthood passes. And you move to your elder years. And then finally, the body dissolves. What is this life? Why do you need it? The yogis say human life <clears throat> is very rare, <clears throat> very precious. For what have you come to this world? What is the deep destiny of your life? The deep calling? The purpose of being here? Human beings have their unique expression, each person in the world. Your unique evolution has brought you a unique way of being, something to offer to the world. But that alone is not the purpose of your life. Your life is an opportunity, an opportunity to grow in depth and magnitude, and to realize the nature of your existence. In this created world, Living beings are caught in a cycle of life and death, grasping and fearing. In the duality of creation, Many people feel pain and suffering because without that pain, where is joy? Both are part and parcel of human life. Accomplishment, achievement, joy, pain, loss, sorrow, physical health, physical suffering mental health, mental suffering. They are part and parcel of the spectrum of creation. In this stratum of dualism, of mundane life, true happiness cannot be achieved because for every great joy and achievement, there is a loss and a suffering. The yogis say that to take the unreal to be real, to take pain to be pleasure, this is the great illusion. 
the great mistake, the great misunderstanding. In Christianity, it was called, it is called sin, the primal sin. To assume that by grasping, you can achieve something that will forever make you happy. And that by running away from or suppressing that which is unwanted, you will be able to achieve the joy. No, no, no. In the world of duality, both are complementary of each other. This is the spectrum of human existence, and this is the spectrum of human suffering. Those ancient sages and sages of the past, those living beings who gave themselves over to seeking deeper truths and bringing those truths from within their source out into the world, those beings from the earliest times of human existence have realized there is a deeper happiness. There is a deeper stratum, a deeper purpose to human life that is not governed by this dualistic, worldly approach. There is a stratum that exists underneath the chaotic rise and fall of the waves of the sea of existence. There is a calm stratum, deep waters, where you are not subject to duality, where you abide and exist in a love, in truth, in being that is unitary, whole. It is not your ego self, your individual self, but the self of yourself. This is the Satguru, the true Guru of your life, the deep source of all existence. The unitary whole which encompasses the opposites. The yin and yang form a whole, <clears throat> a circle in which the opposites are complete, in which there is wholeness. Beneath the chaos of duality lies this unitary existence. And human life is an opportunity, an opportunity to come to know this divinity, to know it deeply, not with your mind and your intellect and your ideas, but to know it with your soul with your being, with all of you. How to do this? There are so many religious texts, so many writings. Some say turn east, some say turn west. What to do? 
how to find your deep stratum of existence where the dualities become whole and you are in your deep source of being. You are one with your deep beloved. There are many paths, many doors, but there are some fundamental truths that are beyond the path, the beliefs, the doorways you choose. One is that this infinite existence, this divine love, this absolute truth, this essence of being cannot be touched, cannot be acquired by grasping. As much as you try to grab hold of it, it slides through your fingers. Then you think there is no God. This essence of being is illusion. I can't see it. I can't feel it. I can't uh, eat it. I can't touch it. Therefore, it slides through my fingers when I try to acquire it. Therefore, it doesn't exist. So the ignorant mind says, caught in material existence, in the dualities of life. But when due to either some hardship or some profound experience, be it an intimate experience with someone, an experience in nature, or a deep meditation, you find that your mind and your feelings, your essence, goes beyond dualities, moves outside of the spectrum of dark and light, pain and joy. And when that happens, you sink into something so primordial so natural. It is your home from whence you have come. You sink into the ocean of infinity, the aware, intelligent consciousness, the love that has no second, the bright light of which nothing else can compare. You discover this not by grasping, not through ideas and intellect, you can't acquire it, but it comes to you naturally, sweetly. It is in reality something that you let go into. like a shower of grace. It is a shower that is always there, a beingness, a consciousness, a love that is always there in everything, everywhere, in every atom of existence, in every form you see and believe to be in duality, 
is in its essence a part of the unitary whole, the unitary reality that permeates the manifest and the unmanifest universe, that permeates creation. This is your soul, your essence, your Atman. And it is one with the Paramatma, the infinity of being, the love which has no end, the beloved of your heart is in the essence of being. Human life is an opportunity, an opportunity to discover your true nature, to move out of ignorance into truth, to move out of separation and pain into love unconditional. It is an opportunity to discover the beloved and to melt into that beloved. And when you truly let go let go of the umbrella of ego, take it down, of your self-importance, of your ability to acquire things and to achieve things and to do things. Let it down, let the ego down. And instead, let go, surrender. That is the path to truth. That is the path to the beloved. Where I and thou become one. Where the walls of duality and separation dissolve. And the true nature of what is, the true nature of your own self is revealed in the deep waters of truth, in the deep waters of divine love. Unconditional love. In the deep waters where you let go and surrender into the beloved. And the light of infinite being permeates everything. That conscious, intelligent, unitary whole is the great dreamer of the dream of creation in which all life, all existence dances in the mind of the great dreamer is the play of creation in the mind of the great dreamer is the dream of your existence. But when you turn around and you discover the dreamer, then that which is dreamed dissolves back into the dreamer. You become whole, complete, Lover, beloved, and the act of loving become one. Then there is no God or self. 
there is only the infinite waves of divine existence, the infinite beingness, the wholeness of love. This is your birthright and your destiny. This love, this truth has no opposite. There is nothing outside of it. Some people may say, God has let me down. Why are all these terrible things happening in my life? I don't believe in God anymore. He's not helping me out. But that infinite source is not a man in heaven that's going to shield you from the lessons of life so that you can live in ignorance. No. That one is your closest friend, closer than close, the one who knows your essence, your being, and stands with you through thick and thin. But that shower of love, which is always there, has to be noticed. An openness, a willingness to sink back and let go, to allow love to be, to allow the shower of grace to permeate you, even in your darkest hour. This is the truth of your life. And when you let go, when you surrender, that one is there, always there with you, in thick and thin, sharing your joy, sharing your pain. And the more you commune with that infinite source, the more the pain and pleasure become a balanced experience, neither one to be sought or to be rejected, because they are the balance of life in the world of duality, in the world of form, But to the yogi whose eyes are open, whose ears can hear, the bird song, the wind in the grasses, are the song of the beloved. The truth is known. All forms are the forms of the one. There is nothing outside of that one. So when you sink into the wholeness of love, when you sink into the ocean of being, into the halls of truth, then when you walk in the world, You see the forms 
You feel the joy. You feel the pain. But the joy, the pain, the forms are a covering upon a substantive existence, a dream in a great mind, a play within the love of the infinite. For those with eyes to see and ears to hear, the Beloved's voice is everywhere. The Beloved's form is in all forms. And with eyes closed in deep meditation, or with eyes open in the world, it is the same. Love divine. is an ocean of being, a sea without a shore, a love without an end. In which you dissolve and the sea is your home. The love is your nature. Aware, intelligent, unconditioned, infinite love, truth, being. The discovery of this is the great opportunity and the deep purpose of your existence. Your ability to find your way home to your source. where there is no duality. Only the one. So begin your life afresh this very moment. Find your destiny, find your eternal source, all right? Namaskar. In the spirit of this talk, let us visualize in your hands the flower of the color of your mind. And let us chant, Akanda, chant as an offering to that infinite self, infinite Brahma, Sadguru Vidin. Akanda Mandala Karam Yatam Param Darshita Hankena 
to this infinite self. Nice to see all of you, or to hear all of you. This is, just for a few minutes, we have opportunity to maybe share anything referent to this um, talk that Matrey and Baba shared with us. I always, you know, I hear so many times this kind of, there's only infinite, and this world is illusion, but relative illusion. But how in the day-to-day -day life to go through this, sometimes we are happy, sometimes we are not happy, Someone goes on our nerves, or this and that. Life is a spectrum of so many shades of feelings. It's absolutely um, colorful world we live in. And as Baba was talking, I had this word that came to my mind. Embrace your struggles. I mean, this is my kind of take out of this talk, is that when struggles and pain comes, we are so resistant to it that it becomes even stronger. Can you come here? Yeah, yeah, definitely. We can also talk. You can unmute yourself if you are muted. Yeah. Just unmute yourself. Uh, so I'm just kind of opening a little bit floor for our little sharing and what you got out of this talk. And I see some people are in a deep sadhana and hard to maybe um, come to the words. Because these talks are not just words and our intellectual understanding of that, but they carry certain energy with it that can help us to get in touch with that deep inner feelings, inner heart, you know. So, any sure. thoughts or any questions? Let's just open up the floor for anyone who wants to talk. Just unmute yourself and just share give us what your you want. your kind of. Um, you want. Yeah. I'll just start. I just I wish that more people could hear the message that can you turn it off? from Baba through my um, I just felt like it really related to our current um, political situation and how we are so on 
different opposite ends of the spectrum. And if we could just let go a little bit of grasping on to our staunch beliefs, we might be able to come together in a more balanced, centered way. But that's the process that I think the whole humanity is going through on individual and collective level. We individually like come in touch with yoga or some different spiritual journey and we kind of have deep understanding but bigger portion of humanity is caught into the struggles and cannot see beyond that. So I think even what's happening in this time of this crisis we are going through, it's a collective struggle, struggle for truth, struggle for dharma. So we are part of that. And this small community coming together, we shed some light, you know. I guess if you think of it, what you said, um, Anandama, about embracing the struggle, then it turns it more into an opportunity. Um, if we embrace what's going on, I tend to try and, you know, fight it or go within or, you know, move away from it. But if we can embrace it and see it as an opportunity, then there is a chance for growth and coming together. Mm -hmm. More voices. <laughs> I didn't mean to take us in that direction, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's wonderful, thank you. I think sometimes after meditation, we're not always real talkative, we've just done three hours of meditation. and, and uh, had a talk in a sort of a little bit of an internal space. I have a question, possibly it's just a comment. And the question is related to the prior young lady's statement, um, and as well what you said, um, in that, um, um, Maitre, in your talk with, you know, the Baba, my interpretation of what I just heard the young lady say here, and as well you said, is, is we're all kind of going through something collectively. It's all happening together. But in fact, you distinctly said, you know, all farms are the farms of the one, right? right. And if that is true, and you also said human life is an opportunity to know the Sadhguru within all of our, with all of our being. Um, so what you're also saying is a lot of people are just, uh, like you said, kind of blind to who they really are. Basically, I'll say it that way. Yeah. And then some people are waking up to who they really are. And then there's this area in between where some are waking up and some are not awake. And then there's the quote perception that all those people who are not quote yet awake are causing the problem. And they're in this camp struggling and striving and grasping or they're in this other camp struggling, striving and grasping. But for those people who are in fact awake, um, quote unquote awake, um, we're all still going through this suffering together. Even though you're awake or you know a lot <laughs> about what's happening based on truth, you are still experiencing the suffering with everyone else. You're not above all of that. <laughs> I just make the comment on that. That's kind of what I'm personally feeling, experiencing. I'm, I can't just take myself out of the soup 
of troubles that are going on around here. Mm -hmm. you know? That's totally correct. We're all a part of it, you know, but, but I think the more we can sustain perspective mm -hmm. that we have, you know, we can go, okay, everything is Brahma, everything is the divine, and we can really feel that, you know, even about the hard things and the painful things and the people who we disagree with, <laughs> right, um, or we think are causing so much strife in the country, and, you know, still to recognize the play the play of consciousness and and yet how we're engaged in it and we each do have our purpose in the, in the world you know that's my yeah. thought yeah. yeah it's like the flame of one candle one light can bright many candles so if each of you is that spark of light and anyone around you, you can kindle them, how to say it. Yeah. Then that's how humanity grows in its consciousness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have any thoughts, anything that's arisen from this time of meditation or from the talk? Govinda? Acharya Rama <laughs> called the phone. We have here a pilot, and I just got this vision when he's in the plane, he has this incredible view <laughs> underneath. So it's like in meditation, we fly high. <laughs> you need to unmute yourself. Oh, namaskar, everyone. <laughs> Sorry for joining the uh, retreat a bit late. I'm glad that I could be part of it to some extent. Um, nice to feel the energy. Um, for me, more than anything else, is, is my own awakening. Um, the importance of... Uh, waking, connecting to source, and uh, with all our heart, with all, our with all my devotion, um, with all my effort, the importance of being here now. And um, with this conscious effort, share my light and love and service to the world. That's beautiful. Thank you. Sky. Today's talk, um, for me, I'm suffering with a lot of physical pain over the past few days. Uh -huh. And with today's talk and duality and just physicality and lightning, just a reminder that, again, this physical form is not everything. And I seem to have been getting caught up so much in the pain that it, Today's talk and meditation allowed me kind of to escape it for a minute and to really realize that you know a lot of it is up here also. You know, so thank you for that and for that, that space to be able to, to let go for a little bit. Just a thank you. Here. Thank you. It's good to see you. <laughs> yeah, anyone has some more to add or what you got out of this? We have a few minutes left.
Sure, can Nanda, not, not people not in Ananda Marga talk? <laughs> <laughs> so just so you know, my name's Joel. Let me get the video on here. And I was in Ananda Marga way before, <laughs> a long, long time ago, <laughs> in the 70s, basically. Yeah. And somehow here we are. So I'm, I'm, if there's any Indian meditation group that's, it, that I'm peripherally involved with, City Yoga, Mukta Ananda Guru Mai, it's just great to hear at the end of the, the same prayers that, that they have in City Yoga, the Tashmai Shri, the, the same exact, they read a certain text. Anyway, um, you know, it's interesting, I'm going to give a, a, something that came up to me, a, the late Stephen Levine, a teacher, spiritual teacher, who worked a lot with people with death and dying, he did that, and he passed on a few years ago. He, would t he made one of his talks about forgiveness, and he said, well, you start by forgiving the person who, you know, didn't serve you the right food at the restaurant. And then you go to maybe you had a problem on the highway. And then he, he progressed to heavier and heavier weights. He said, or are we getting to heavier, heavier, heavier weights? I think right now, even though we're, I believe we're all in the path here on some level, probably pretty deeply, to getting to that non-duality, we're going to have much, much heavier weight. <laughs> so I find myself reacting in many ways much more than I might have done 20 years ago. And I feel I'm more advanced spiritually in many ways. But we have a political situation, pandemic, racial, everything that's happening. A person who's running the country, the most polar, I'm, I'm an older person. He's the most polarizing person who's ever run this country. I mean, there's no question on that. And so we have a heavier and heavier weight. So, in a sense, maybe still look at the, the, the path to, to, to that non-duality, but, you know, not to judge ourselves so much, to, to the little forgiveness for yourself, whatever's happening and however we're caught up in it. And it is an opportunity. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, John. Yeah. I mean, it's sometimes I feel what's happening is a catalyst for transformation. It brings side to side good and bad. I don't know how to describe it, <laughs> you know, but it's in juxtaposition, light and dark, you can see now what is what. And then eventually light will win. There is no way that light cannot penetrate the darkness. So that's why all these pockets of light have to come together and to shine into the darkness. Yeah, I, I do think that we're, we're, we're in the midst of transformation and change. And uh, transformation requires a, a um, disintegration of, or a deconstruction of what was in order to transform to what would be. And I, I do believe that we're in a deconstruction period. So... Yeah. It's, it, it's, it looks bad now, but it might be good in the future. <laughs> yeah. Can we kind of walk through this little uncertain waters? And, yeah. and, and this is, I think, what the talk was about, too, is the duality of life, you know? That, that we have to deconstruct one thing in order to create something new. And... Um, there is definitely a transformation that has to happen on our planet. Yeah. And this is, a, I feel, is ultimately deeply a spiritual issue that's mm -hmm. going on in our world today. So it's um, a lot of manifestation. Time of opportunity, where they say crisis is time as opportunity and. I kind of feel, in a way, very happy that I'm born at this time. It looks like things don't go so well. But you're, you're, you're a person to take on challenges. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had the challenges all my life. But I'm so, so grateful, you know, I have so many spiritual friends and having shelter of Guru. It's, it's just, I cannot, you know, be more grateful than that. And even we are here, 12 people together, it's, it's incredible. Like, And I was reading one email today from Shri um, Karuna Mai, 
And today is actually very auspicious. They had no idea. It's something astrologically. I will read that and it may be in the afternoon I can remind you what's about, but it's some kind of 18th of July being auspicious day. Some planets astrologically are aligned. <laughs> so here we are in the specific auspicious time. So, so let's enjoy this day. And if you can be this afternoon, great. If you cannot, thank you for being this morning. Um, so, so, uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I just wanted to say something about this afternoon. Mm -hmm. So this afternoon, I just wanted to share with you what will happen. We're, we're going to break now for an hour. In our time zone, this is lunchtime. Um, for other people on the East Coast, I know it's not lunchtime, but it's break time. And we have, um, and then when we come back, we'll have a, a, a two to five session. And the, we're going to begin with doing an experiential uh, exercise that we've done a lot in our yoga teacher and yoga therapy trainings, uh, where we do where we, where one person asks the other. Uh, we break out into dyads, and we fortunately can do that on here. Yeah, <laughs> breakout rooms. And and one person asks the other, who, "Who are you? What are you?" And then. And then says, "Can you?" And then you give, you really feel inside, and you say what you feel in that moment. And explain. then you, then you, then you. Um, we will demo it. We will actually yeah. train our will be guinea pigs for you <laughs> to see the process how it goes, and then we will break down into rooms. In each room will be two people. You have half an hour, fifteen minutes. One person asks questions to the other one and then vice versa. Then we come together. And then at three o'clock our time, we have sharing discussion on spirituality, spiritual journey and experiences. Yeah, that's an opportunity for personal sharing about your own spiritual journey, about your own experiences, your own experiences with teachers, any anything that comes up with gurus, whatever comes. And then we have meditation. And again. then we have, uh, Liam will sing some wonderful uh, he's songs. Been, uh, his back is so Go bad. Ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. To yeah. Hear. Joel will sing something, I will sing something, and we'll have some meditation. Whoever else wants to. And in that way, our spiritual day will be concluded. So you can leave your computer on, you just turn your mic and screen, camera, and we'll just come back at 2 o'clock or 5 o'clock Eastern Time. Okay, wonderful okay. seeing you. It's, it's wonderful to have you all with us. Take care. Take care. We're, we might have uh, some other people come in the afternoon. Namaskar. Namaskar.